bit too high to climb if the basement I'm looking for were in that building. Could it be an elevator shaft? How does this thing open? I'm guessing it lights <laughs> up when you bad. ring at the main door. <laughs> Did he even notice if I got him? <laughs> Does he need a shotgun to deal with supplies? <laughs> Maybe it leads to the basement. Something tells me he'd notice me no matter how stealthy I was. No. The plan will only work if O'Leary doesn't know I've been here. What happened? Should we run for it? Do I look like I'm in a hurry? I need you to go to the front door and ring the bell. All right, is there a bar in that alley? Have you been drinking? Count to 30, ring the bell, then run for the car. Got it? Whoa. You better send a bunch of Italians my way after this. So, now what are you gonna do? I'll open the door with my lockpicks. Once I'm in... I'm still not sure if I'll take the hall or the door on the right. standard model. I had to give it my all.
Why do they have so many paper notes? Do they get that many orders? some frozen bodies. Hmm. The odds are incredibly in Stone's favor. I guess that he's the reigning champion, and Bobby Yale is just a contender, but maybe word got out about his condition. Looks like those colorful notes weren't restaurant orders after all. Hmm. There's one on each table, except this one. Wow, I didn't realize you could place so many bets on a single baseball game. A little thingamajig that adds on its own. What'll they think of next? Looks like a summary of all the bets that come in. Day, amount, bet, wagerer. Wait a minute, did O'Leary himself bet five grand on Yale? Sometimes I forget that criminals, even the office variety, have family and kids. And anyway, maybe things aren't so bad on the dark side. Sixteen days until the fight.
Could that be Ireland? I'd say that's Ireland too. concealed file after file of celebrity reports with all sorts of shady information, ranging from S to Z. Almost all of them were athletes. Is that what O'Leary meant when he said that detectives and police officers were his friends? I wonder how many spy for him. If I were to pitch in, who would I spy on? Bobby Dale's folder, all I found was a log of his incredible stats as an aspiring champion. 20 victories, 16 by knockout. Although, at the end of the report, someone had underlined one word several times. Untouchable. Thorpe had been a rising football star before the war, which he came back from with honors and decorations. After the truce, he resumed his career. He won three season trophies and a couple of MVP awards. He retired after an accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. He started his own sports advertising agency four years ago, but according to the files, O'Leary hadn't even tried to corrupt him. According to Stone's report, he was so clean, not to mention hard to corrupt, that O'Leary opted for a more subtle strategy. Apparently, when he broke up with the tennis player Helen Moore, he set her up with Stone. Lucky for him, they hit it off. As I put away the report, I stopped in my tracks. Did I really want to risk knowing what O'Leary had on my good friend? the incorruptible police commissioner? To be honest, if Smirnoff had anything to hide, I'd rather not know about it. Limited edition copy two of three. We listen, if you call it listening, to the sentimental romance. Your eyes act like the moon. If they're not together anymore, why does O'Leary keep so many pictures of romantic moments with Helen Moore? Strange as it may seem, the reports reveal that O'Leary had hired Jake as a bodyguard precisely because he was absolutely clean. 
Apparently, he liked to surround himself with honest people when he mingled with the high society. Helen Moore's file was, by far, one of the juiciest. She had been just a run-of-the-mill tennis player until O'Leary launched her career by rigging enough games to help her climb the ranking. However, O'Leary hadn't fixed any of her games in over a year. In spite of that, she remained undefeated. Be as it may, it was clear that O'Leary had enough information to ruin her career. Ireland, of course. This guy's obsessed. Luckily or not, files N through R included no one that I could somehow connect to the case. I never become the object of O'Leary's obsession. Dunn's integrity was legendary. Even in O'Leary's shady reports, just like Yale had said, Dunn had kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym when he found him snooping around. The report on Yale's father was the shortest of all, since only his name was left. Why? Cassidy's report was possibly the longest among all of O'Leary's files. Apparently, their rivalry went way back. So much so that they spied on each other in the most unthinkable ways. At least I was able to confirm what Yale had told me. Cassidy had threatened Dunn after he refused to join the manager's union. Crossler? 
The good news is, I don't need lockpicks to open it. The bad news, I didn't bring explosives. O'Leary has threatened Stone with ruining Moore's career. Even Dunn had a gun in his office. O'Leary couldn't possibly be the exception. Dunn had $200 in his safe. O'Leary had about $20,000 in a drawer. Jake. Someone was coming. Are we or are we not exemplary workers, Jake? Here it is, middle of the night. And we're working extra hours. What do you think about that? I think he's scared stiff, Desmond. <laughs> Why's that, Jimmy? We're giving you the red carpet treatment. We even let you in the boss's office. You're one lucky fellow. <laughs> you can't say I don't treat you well, Jimmy. <laughs> Calm down. How long have you worked for me, Jimmy? Three, 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 three months. Three months. Oh, yeah. I hired you right after your cousin Martin died. I need your opinion. How would you punish someone for ruining an innocent man's life with a hit and run, Jimmy? I, I don't know. And tell me, what about you, Wilson? What would you do? <laughs> He was a good guy. <laughs> of course, you already knew that. You knew him better than me, right? <laughs> he was my cousin. I. That's why I hired you, Jimmy. You see, Martin was a dear friend. And his widow said you were a nice kid. That you'd do a good job. And you needed the money. And I, I have a soft spot for those in need. Please. But, uh, you know what? I talked to her just yesterday. She told us you did some naughty things to her with that gun, Jimmy. No, no, no. That's no way to treat a widow, is it? <laughs> She's lying, lying. Why would I do that? What about the kid? <laughs> Are you so sure you know how long a kid can hold his breath? With his little head inside a toilet bowl? Son of a bitch. I didn't want to. It was his idea. Selfishly, I was glad I hadn't risked my life to save Jimmy. Maybe not even someone like him deserves to die. But one could also argue that I didn't deserve to die for someone like him. Who's your boss? Give me a name! Cassidy. It was his idea. 
He said you'd hired me if I'd managed to scare the widow, and I just... All right, all right. Let's just... <laughs> calm down now. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> There are two sacred principles that rule my life. The first principle is the love for my family. I do anything to protect them. The second principle, I never put my future in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I would even add a third principle, or better yet, a rule. If anything threatens either of these two crucial principles, I take matters into my own hands. You see where this is going? For the first time, I got someone killed. Even though all I really did was rat him out. No, I, no, 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 I just... Stop I, interrupting I, me, Jimmy. No. It's not polite. Sorry. We're all the same. <laughs> so rude. You know what? Let's leave it at that. You're going to give a message to that disgusting walrus Cassidy, aren't you? Yeah, 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 sure. Whatever you say. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Good boy. What? 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 what, what what's the message? Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. You still don't get it, do you? You are the message. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Come on. Wrap him up. Make sure Cassidy gets the message for breakfast, will you? I hope he chokes on it. Got it. Hmm, where are you hiding, little fishy? Once again, you didn't get to hear the end of my story. Just where do you think you're going, putty cats? <laughs> Two sacred principles rule my life. The first is... The love I feel for my family. The second... Never leave destiny in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I'd even had a third principle, or better yet, a rule. If anything threatens either of these two principles, I take matters into my own hands. The first time that someone died because of me, even though all I did was rat him out, well, that guy ended up in the Hudson River, right off Pier 27. He's got to be even wetter than that fish by now. You should have seen his face. It's interesting what comes to mind when you think you're about to die. Suddenly all I could think about was how much I wanted a pet fish. You too, Anyway, I was 14 years old, and I still dream about it. But a and it's By then, I was adamant about buying a fish. But, but first... That was that. Never again. Nowadays, whether it's me who pulls the trigger or not, I have zero regrets. What's more, I sort of enjoy it.
In case anyone had any doubts about who's the boss around here, I'll put my dirty feet on his luxurious table to prove that all of this is mine. His pupils are dilated, and there's a slight grin on his face. The bastard is enjoying himself. When a mob boss declares his love of family, it can only mean that A, he won't hesitate to ruin yours, and B, he's cheating on his wife. The guy never hesitates to pull the trigger. Even if I hadn't seen what he did to Jimmy, I'd know he's not bluffing. I knew I had it in me to get out of that place alive. O'Leary's wife is having an affair with Colbert? Should I serve this to O'Leary on a silver platter? Or threaten Colbert so he'll get me out of this mess? And, well, that's it, I think. <laughs> you know, Black Sad, I never made it this far. Congratulations, you're going in style. I didn't want to interrupt you because I respect you and your word, but I'm actually here to help. Your wife is having an affair with Colbert. What? Me? No way! <laughs> well, here's the thing. I don't respect your word. And since you brought me no proof... Check my coat pocket, on the right. <laughs> oh, black sir, black sir, black sir. <laughs> ah! Oops. <gasps> Thank you very much. And sorry for jumping to conclusions. First, you get a random beating from my men. And here we are. When you shared what you'd found in Yale's apartment, well, it made me sort of want to trust you. But as you well know, you can't trust anyone in this world. Take it. It's only fair. I want to bet it all on the fight, on Sonia Dunn's behalf. Oh, what a romantic you are. We listen, if you call it listening, to the sentimental romance. Your eyes act like the moon. Ah, a cultured man. Anyway, go ahead, place your bet. I bet it all on Yale. <laughs> oh, Black Sad. Aren't these odd hours to pay me a visit? Your message was important, but certainly not urgent. It could have waited until tomorrow, don't you think? We cats and wolves hunt at night. I wish I was a noir fiction writer. At this very moment, I could write a couple of pointed, ironic remarks for the narrator to recount what I just lived through. The dark, crooked alleys of New York, 
reminded me of the state of my own soul. Hmm. No. Fall loomed over me with the... Fall struck me with the full force of my long-lost youth. Nah, not that. Fall descended over me with the full weight of a guilty conscience. God, that's worse. What were you thinking? He wants him alive! I felt fall seep through my bones like the pain of a good beating. <laughs> Mediocre, but appropriate. Against all odds, next morning I got up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and I had my kind, unknown assailants to thank. The beating had taken its toll, but for the first time in months, I had slept like a baby. Oh, come on, Helen, focus! All right, take five. We'll work on that double backhand later. Well... Mr. Blackmore, what can I do for the FBI? Actually, the real question is, what don't you want the FBI to do to you? <laughs> Quick to thread, are we? Not that I'm not flattered, mind you, but I'd appreciate if you were a bit less fake. Maybe if we could speak in private? Alec! Coming! You've got four minutes, Mr. Blackmore, so... Make them count? We know about you and Desmond O'Leary. Wow. The FBI sure knows what it's doing. So, out of the 100 million Americans who know about that, who did you extort to get such highly confidential information? The thing is, well... <laughs> you see, I'd love to wipe out that part of my past, but whatever. Do you have any regrets? Ads pay more than trophies. Can you believe it? Being associated with such a shady character could only damage my reputation. Trust me, never get involved with a married man. They say you're currently involved with Al Stone, the boxer. Is that correct? Wow, your sagacity never ceases to amaze me. Don't beat around the bush. We know why you're with him. Oh. So you like his biceps, too? Desmond O'Leary asked you to seduce Stone. Why? What? No. I met Al by chance at a party. A party hosted by Desmond O'Leary. No, that can't be. No one is that shrewd. Not even him. Damn, I hate that bastard. We're aware of at least six rigged games during your first year as a professional player. And? You won all of them. Uh, are you trying to offend me? 
I give my all on the court. I can't be held accountable if my rivals don't do the same. Go interrogate them. In any case, now I know why you mentioned O'Leary. What do you really have against him? And don't say illegal gambling. I'm sorry, but I can't reveal that information. I'm serious, Miss Moore. America can't afford to let anyone shake its foundations like that. And America's sweetheart can't afford it either. Help us out. Talk to us. And why should I, Mr. Blackmore? What do I stand to gain or lose? The FBI always returns a favor. Oh yeah? Are they gonna rig my games? This is actually quite simple. One lucky gal. You have a light, sir? Hmm. The pearly white teeth of someone who barely smokes. Am I making her nervous? Damn. I'm almost out of fluid. Wanna know my trick? Go down to start then up with it, and then down again. Will I get to smoke today? Don't worry, I'm not making any assumptions about your masculinity. Almost. Will I get to smoke today? Thanks. I don't know what you want me to say. You're trying to frame O'Leary, perhaps rightfully so, but I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Believe me. If I had the slightest... Come on, Helen. <sighs> Time to work on your backhand. Let's go. <sighs> Do you smoke? Nice meeting you, Mr. Blackmore. Did you bring my water? America's sweetheart gave you her cigarette? Dear God, she has the hots for you! I can't believe you said good old weekly to investigate that stupid walrus while you were hanging out with Helen Moore herself! So, what do you say, you and me, we change places next time, huh? Your turn. Now tell me, what did you find out? Ah, you're gonna love this. You ready? I've got news, but I happen to also have a pla- uh. Black Sad. What? Who is... Oh, oh, Mrs. Colbert. But last night he got a phone call. He said he had to work, and he still hasn't come back. Nobody's seen him at work since yesterday evening. Plus, I haven't heard from you since our first conversation. Do you have anything? I wouldn't worry too much. It hasn't even been 24 hours. Not even the police take these matters seriously until it's been at least 48 hours. I don't know. He'll be back, I promise. Mrs. Colbert? That good for nothing! I'm gonna scratch his eyes out! I'll tear his stupid head off! I'm gonna make him regret! Up. Uh. But what just happened? Is there anything you didn't tell me? Maybe. But now it's your turn. Tell me about Cassidy. 
Come on, spit it out. I didn't find anything suggesting that Cassidy had anything to do with Dunn's murder, but... That's quite the tale. But I know Cassidy will be playing poker tonight with one Howard M. Farnham II, a Texas tycoon looking to get his claws on the boxing business. I also know that he and Cassidy have never met in person, and that Farnham, who's staying at the Balford Hotel, hasn't left his room. Apparently, he spent the night with three bottles of bourbon. So, here's my incredible plan. I'll go to the hotel. <laughs> I'd knock him out. Huh. And then, take his place in the poker game. That way, I'll get Cassidy talking. What do you think? Incredible, right? Huh? Huh? Uh -huh. Couldn't we agree that you would handle Helen more while I dealt with Cassidy next time? No? Good afternoon, Mr. Farnham. What's going on? Allow me to introduce myself. John Blackmore. I work for Frank Cassidy. He asked me to bring you these bottles so you could choose which one you prefer for the game. Oh, sure. I was fixing to leave, but I guess them monuments ain't going anywhere. <laughs> well, come on in then. Getting in Farnham's room was easy. Earning his trust was another story. But I always have an ace up my sleeve. Blackmore? You okay, partner? The best way to earn someone's trust is to make them believe they've earned yours. And sometimes, the best way to fake it is to tell the truth. I... I don't know where to begin. I accepted money I don't deserve. And now it weighs on my conscience. Let me tell you something about life and business, son. Our Lord didn't separate his creation into rich and poor just for the fun of it. If a man has the money, that's proof enough he doesn't deserve it. You hear what I'm saying? One of the tricks of this trade is to be wary of the biases we all have. They cloud our judgment and blur the person in front of us, painting them with the shades of our preconceived notions of who they should be. But every once in a while, you run into someone so locked in personality that they can only be regarded as a stereotype. Farnham was a disgrace, not only to himself, but to Texas and the entire human race. To think I had to impersonate him. I wish I was like you. You seem so content, so free of burdens. Stop right there, partner. You think this old dog don't have ticks? Let me tell you something about my first wife. Woo -wee. Once I had gained Farnham's trust, the hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. What can I do for you, sir? Farnham was one hell of a drinker. 
I had to get the information out of him before he drank himself unconscious. Otherwise, I'd have to find that information myself. This will surely imbue me with the Texan spirit. Yes, I got a Vietnamese shave last night. No, time. please come in. Of course. I remember you. Take a seat. I'm sure you'll understand we can't be too careful. Our host has many enemies, and someone has to keep them at bay. Sure, I get it. I'm glad to hear that. Now, please answer my question. How much does it cost to get yourself a clean Vietnamese shade? Yeah, sure enough, booze put the nail on the coffin of my first marriage. You know, the wife that caught me cheating with the maid. <laughs> my second marriage, too. You know what I did to her daddy? Same old, same old with several mistresses. So I decided to stick to my guns and only deal with her curse. Even if I did end up <laughs> marrying some. <laughs> I feel you, Mr. Farnham. So I'm going to be honest with you. I'm Cassidy's slave. He lent me the money for a game deposit, and I lost it all. Now I have to work off my debt. Oh, Cassidy's not your problem, son. It's poverty. Sure enough, I had to pay my own deposit this morning to y'all, and that was just petty cash to me. Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me my receipts. You think I am bored? Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I got it somewhere. Just a sec. I get it. I, I just, just put, put it over. Over. Uh, I think. It's, uh, I'll be right back. Not even a Bible. Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. Why didn't you just say you had the receipt in your pocket? I'm almost certain, but tell me, who told you to come to this barber shop? Let me tell you a little secret about my first wife, sonny boy. When I met that woman, she had no manners, no money. Who in the hell? Thank <laughs> you.
find him. My God, if it ain't the hero of the day. I probably don't need to imitate his gestures during the game, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to try. It's not going to be easy to sound Texan, but I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> With this and that bolo tie, I'll really look the part. I'll be dang. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Knowing Fern, the owner oh, of this bra only came here for business. Anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> the craziest goddamn Texan in New York. My good old friend Kenny, craziest goddamn Texan in New York. You know how many Kennys there are in New York? Kenny who? So besides when and where the game will be, the password, and the money Farnham dished out, what else do I need? Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. Luckily, there was only one Kinney in Farnham's address book. Kinney Eeks, residing at... Cornell Plaza, Manhattan, stunning penthouse. I'm not surprised. Mr. Eeks has excellent taste. Do you happen to know what he asked for the last time he was here? Ding-dong? Interesting name for a town. They smell like a party. Don't tell me, Billy Bob. This here is my new friend, Fox. Am I right? Show sure enough, but your slasher friend sure could learn how to treat his customers. Hey, Billy Bob, come on. This guy's a good guy. He's one of us. My apologies, sir. Hey, come on. Get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's an honest Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Right. Ding dong. 
interesting name for a town. superficial someone may seem, there's always a way to win their heart. It'll be my pleasure. Welcome, gentlemen. Chips are on the table and guns are in the safe. Now, we got a lovely night of poker ahead of us full of smoking and bourbon. So let's get started. Take a seat, Mr. Farnham. Let me introduce you. To my right, wearing gray boxes and weighing in at 140 pounds, the owner of Pink Vice, the largest meat market in all of Manhattan. In other words, a real son of a bitch. No offense to the women he exploits. Our reigning champion, Oswald Quince. A title I aim to keep, provided our new contender here doesn't interfere. Well, I'll do what I can. Now you got me worried. Never trust a humble player. The truth is that our friend Farnham owns the largest and, I dare say, most entertaining establishment in Texas. Really? So we're colleagues then? Yeah, you wish, Quince. He owns a casino. Damn. And it's not even in Austin or Dallas. It's actually in a little town called, uh, uh, yeah, what was it? Darn it. I, I looked it up the other day. It had a funny ring to it. I, I hate it when this happens. I thought they moved all Texan casinos to Vegas, where gambling is legal. You mean Ding Dong, Texas? <laughs> ding Dong! That's it. <laughs> Who'd ever think of a name like that? <laughs> well, casino or no casino, let's just hope he doesn't keep as many aces up his sleeve as the late Ventimiglia, huh? Amen. To my left, wearing brown boxes and weighing in at 396 pounds. Frank, show some respect, huh? The hospitality tycoon, Polly. Polly. No. Tycoon? I just own a small bar with pool tables. Clients drink close to nothing and play even less, but certain business transactions just couldn't happen anywhere else. Damn it, Polly. Why don't I know your last name? Because they took it away from me. You have no idea how good my ex-wife's lawyer is. <laughs> Women, they even take our damn names. <laughs> you're too much, Polly. When you're done sightseeing, why don't you drop by La Iguana for a game of pool, and I'll buy you a drink. But I have to warn you, my clientele isn't crazy about furry fellas such as yourself. Thanks. I love me some pool. Perfect. It'll be my pleasure. You're looking to start your own pool business, Farnham? This guy here wants to start a boxing association in Texas. And guess who he's turning to for advice? To be honest, several things got me worried, so I'd be much obliged for any counseling. So, what worries you? Homicidal boxers like Bobby Yale. Ha! <laughs> That's some piece of news, huh? Hey, I don't know if he did it, but the real problem 
is that the fight against my champ Stone might not even freaking happen. The good news is that I've almost convinced the governor to let him out of prison on the day of the fight. Under police escort, that is. I bet you the audience gets a kick out of that. Billy, Bob, bring out the burger. We're drying up here. I'll deal with a fresh deck, of course. We respect traditions in this establishment. Poker is as boring as it is simple. All you need to do is read people's faces. And even the worst detective has that trick up his sleeve. The real issue is knowing what to play for when there's much more than just money at stake. Damn it! What again? How many games have you won, Farnham? Looks like we got a serious contender! <laughs> hey, Quint! You better start unbuckling that championship belt! <laughs> <laughs> this ain't over yet. Mark my words. Farnham will be calling his wife before the night is over. Ha! Oh, hey, 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 by the way, did you guys hear about Kenny's wife? Pretty tragic, huh? What happened? Oh, plain bad luck. Hey, but Farnham, I'm, I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> the craziest goddamn Texan in New York. And the poor fellow's already got enough on his hands now that his wife. Women just gotta have their vices. They're, well, she's in a rehab clinic now, hooked on tranquilizers and all that. That's it, tranquilizers. Don't tell me women don't have their vices, too. Bring out the bourbon, Billy Bob. Come on, come on, give me, give me the bourbon. Maybe I spoke too soon when I said that poker is easy for a good detective. Let's just say it's relatively simple. There's always someone ready to surprise you. Relatively speaking. Well, I'll be damned! I don't believe this! What happened, Farnham? Beginner's luck doesn't last forever. And that's when the real champ comes in. I hope you're ready to lose it all, my friend. <laughs> Poor Farnham! Came looking to make big bucks in the city with his boxing and he's gonna lose it all with poker. <laughs> I hope your counseling will make up for it. Mm. Yeah, so how can I be of help? Rebel coaches like Joe Dunn. Oh, I see you've done your homework. That bastard wouldn't accept the most basic rules. For example, banning boxers from official competitions when the managers don't belong to my association. Hey, don't get me wrong, I'm sorry for his death. But if they ever find the murderer, I'd be glad to pay his lawyer fees. Those there athletes hooking up with each other, like Al Stone and Helen Moore. I see you subscribe to What's News. Yeah! My star boxer, the reigning champion, he's having an affair with America's sweetheart. Hey, I got nothing against those two idiots falling in love. Don't get me wrong, but it's taking a toll on his performance. I don't think he'll lose against Yale, but I'm starting to worry a bit. Come on, come on, let's steal another hand before Quince accuses us of trying to break his winning streak. Ain't gonna happen. Gentlemen, I suggest you never tell your sons about this game. Unless you want to lose their respect. Wait, you mean our sons actually respect us? <laughs> I hear you. There's no way to set boys straight these days. They don't even respond to a good old beating. Then try not beating them. There are better ways to educate boys. 
Hey, careful, Quince. You're talking to a pro. Uh, Kenny told me you had quite a house full. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. Although the communist in me reveled in the sight of a millionaire choking on his own vomit, even so, I couldn't just stand there and watch him die. Unfortunately, I didn't break a sweat trying to save him. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No, that son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. Although, although the communist in me reveled in the sight of a millionaire choking on his own vomit, even so, I couldn't just stand there and watch him die. No, deserving or not, the man would live. Wanted something. I don't know how you deal with all of them. All oh, boys. Does it have to be now? Oh, never let Quince near one of your daughters. Come on, Folly. Children are sacred. I won't Cassidy. lay a finger on them until they're twelve. After that, well, <laughs> let's just say some men have needs that uh, can only be met by a young girl that age, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Are you all right, Farnham? Yes, I'm fine. What if that lovely 12-year-old girl was your sweet little niece, or my cousin Mike's niece? And what if she disappeared a while back? And what if she'd been taken to work uptown? In a brothel, huh? Huh? What do you think about that? Uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Frank. Dare call me Frank. Billy Bob. It's 500 more. <laughs> For washing up. Is it deal? <laughs> Sorry for the spectacle, fellas. I, uh, I had no idea the game would end like this. Please, uh, take my tokens, and that flying scumbag's tokens as well. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some family matters to attend to. If you decide to go ahead with your new venture, call me, Farnham. Your behavior at last night's game was utterly insulting. Never contact me again, or I'll put an end to your pathetic life. If our common acquaintance should ask you about your business endeavors, tell him that boxing is too violent for you. Sign Frank Cassidy. tracks would be covered the following morning when Cassidy read this note from Farnham. Dear Mr. Cassidy, though I'm grateful for your kind help, 
Last night's game made me realize that boxing is just too violent for a peaceful Texan like myself. I have decided to invest elsewhere. Yours sincerely, Howard M. Farnham II. Damn Texans. As for me, it was the first time in days that I had gone to bed without my day. A real shame. Nothing like a bruised body to help you to sleep like a baby. Maybe I should have given myself a baby. Backside. Finally, I need you at the gym now, please. It was like this when I got here. Did you call the police? No, only you. Good. Calm down. I'll take care of this. <laughs> 